Hey there cats and kitties, I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video we'll be discussing my thoughts on the 2015 Doctor Who Christmas special, The Husbands of River Song, and this was an absolute blast. I thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish, and it was one of those things, going into it, I didn't know if they were going to deal with where in River Song's timeline she was exactly, and I had kind of had the thought that, you know, it would be a perfect sort of soliloquy to bring about the fact that, you know, this is the last time the Doctor really sees her. It's a new Doctor, a new face, a new haircut, a new suit, and all those things we hear in, you know, the Silence in the Library two-parter from Series 4, which I don't know how much I would have picked up on all the subtleties in this episode had it not been for the fact that my sis and I were just watching those episodes the other, the other night. I had completely forgotten, you know, in building up to this that uh, River was going to be back for this particular Christmas special. And um, it just worked out that much better that we had just watched it. And I appreciated a lot more the stuff that they put into this episode because of that, in dealing with that timeline thing. And, you know, her eventually going to the library, the having been gifted that Sonic and everything like that. I mean, it answered so many questions. But also, you know, I mean, it was really emotional and there there was a level of, uh, you know, sort of pathos to this whole scenario. And just the character, you know, I was really afraid going into this when we first saw the Next Time trailer, like with how much of a whirlwind Series 9 was and how much I ended up enjoying it from start to finish. I was afraid this was going to be too, like, aloof, too goofy, a, a bit of a step down from series nine and my worries were laid. I mean, it was completely the opposite. It's, you know, right in pitch with the quality as far as I'm concerned with series nine. And um, from the get go, I mean, I was almost afraid they weren't gonna deal with, you know, where in her timeline River was when this starts because it's starting in a very off the cuff fashion where of course the doctor is m m sort of <laughs> mistaken for this surgeon who has no qualms apparently about killing the head of this king with the diamond embedded in it and everything and of course the doctor's mistaken as i say you got the cat from little britain lou and andy represent man um always get a kick out of those two guys <laughs> whenever they show up in anything and um but you know like he's all gay <laughs> like scared out of his gourd uh when he finds out oh, the doctor's the wrong guy you know and uh that whole thing the way river is behaving around him at first there's no mention of the doctor at all and i'm like why doesn't she seem to be you know even with the 12th doctor sort of mentioning things dropping hints getting all smiley i mean when you see capaldi grinning it's just like oh man it's the greatest thing ever because he never does <laughs> it's just like but he's, he's trying to figure out what's going on with her. The viewer, I, I as the viewer, I'm like, what is going on with her? Why is she not recognizing, like, this is the Doctor, this is one of him, you know, one of his incarnations. Does she even know? Like, I was, I was really sort of wonky on where we were with her. Uh, because, like, literally, there's, there's no mention. And with how much, how familiar we've, you know, become with River as far as... It's like the Doctor is her everything, and that's very much the crux of the character on display in this episode. The Doctor, through her dialogue, she says it explicitly. She loves that man. And, like, because that recognition was so slow coming, the first time, you know, when they're talking about uh, Damsel or whatever, and you have that, like, wall at the picture book... And all of the spaces from 1 to 11, including, I might add, the War Doctor, which was quite interesting. Has River met the War Doctor? Maybe she just knows about him? I don't know. Um, I thought that was absolutely hilarious and awesome. Anytime you get like a classic series homage where you see the faces of classic Doctors and all that stuff. I mean, it totally rubbed me the right way. And I was like, okay, we're toying around with it. That We're doing this on purpose, you know, and then being... The, the chase is on, you know, with this giant cybernetic Big Hero 6 looking robot coming after him and everything, swallowing as many heads as it can. And she's married to this guy, that guy, and the other thing. It's just, it was hilarious, but it wasn't that like, you know, I said something quite a while ago about like, I hope with River's return, they wouldn't do that sort of overly romantic fluffy comedy stuff that was it was just getting a little tired every time she would crop up with like the matt smith doctor and everything like that and this was 
such a refreshing way of handling the character for me because they brought back all of that drama, all that heartening tension in this is about to end. You know, she's going to the library, if not immediately after this or 24 years after this, <laughs> you know, the night on this particular planet, 24 years long. Um, if not immediately, that's going to be one of her next steps. And we kind of know she was kind of around still, maybe sort of, kind of, sort of, <laughs> you know, um, like as, as an algorithm or like a, a you know, I don't know, a, a signal ghost. I don't know exactly what it was. Spoilers. But this is the penultimate, you know, moment for them. And as soon as we had a new doctor, as soon as, you know, we got Capaldi, I was like thinking about that. Like, would that be the doctor she sees last? And would we eventually get a story that does exactly what this episode did? Um, amidst all of the, and I gotta say, the creature effects, like from the giant hulking robot by itself, the cyborg, whatever you want to call it, to the, like, half-head guy <laughs> and all of those people, I was legitimately unnerved, borderline sickened. I am so glad the doctor even acknowledges, you don't want to do this in a restaurant. You know what? I got news for you. You don't want to do it in any good company um, because that was disconcerting as all hell, seeing this guy rip his head apart. And uh, <laughs> that whole thing, like the, the inconvenience of the fact that they are all worshippers of this king guy and it's his head and the way the doctor flips that on its ear no pun intended. I mean, it was just, it was pitch perfect. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. The characters in the background, those like blue headed guys with the tusks and everything, um, the sort of mater d's of this particular, you know, vessel with all this, as River says, where genocide comes to, you know, hang out or whatever, have a party. Um, I didn't feel like they were wasted. I felt like they were integral to the plot, moving it along and, and served their purpose. I didn't feel like there was any sort of missed opportunities in this particular special. I felt like everything came to a fruition. And when everything was finally said and done, finally, that whole idea of using the TARDIS and using the time travel so that the Doctor could make River's sort of dream come true, but also tapping into fate, tapping into that aspect of time that is locked you know, that can never be sort of undone. And that whole discussion that reflects all of that between the Doctor and River toward the end, because she has a sense, you know, she's not an idiot. She isn't walking into the library knowing this is the definitive last time I'll have ever see him in physical form in any case. She still has a suspicion and he won't answer her, you know, spoilers. But I like that she's not a dimwit. She knows this is probably the last time and there was even that sense of like you know in the characterization going back to the silence in the library I don't want to say that she knew it from right out of the gate I mean because there is that reveal toward the end she does realize with the tenth doctor you know oh so you've known all along this was where it was going to be and everything this was where I was going to die and whatever like that in a sense you were sending me to my death or what have you uh, or involved in it um so it wasn't like a tremendous shock for her, but at the same time, it was no less emotional and meaningful. And I just, it, it was palpable. I was watching like just enwrapped by that, playing back and forth. Finally, the recognition had hit home and now they were having their final moments in a sense. And I just loved it. I loved seeing... Capaldi being the most, I know it's going to be controversial to say, because he is supposed to be the alien Time Lord Doctor, and even River considers him to be that. But this is almost the most human we've seen the Twelfth Doctor. And if people had a bad taste left in their mouth from how far beyond, you know, he went, you know, to the nth degree to try to save Clara, um, he knows... You know, it's like lesson learned once again. He's tripped himself up. He made mistakes. And once again, being reunited with River, it's almost a solidification of that realization. I can't. I just can't. There are some things I can't do. There are some people I can't save. And it's just about the moment in the here and now. 
we got to make the most of it. And he went above and beyond to make that final encounter, for all intents and purposes, with River the most he could make out of it. And I truly believe it wasn't just for her sake. That whole time when she's, you know, under the gun and she's saying the doctor could never love me. It's like, you know, looking at a sunset, wanting it to love you back and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was heart wrenching. And I don't think I would have swallowed it at all were it not for Capaldi's reaction and the constant keeping on his face and his looking at her. And, and you know, she she doesn't even realize until the very end of her, her sort of, you know, speech there. When she looks back and it's like it hits home. But that whole time, his his looking at her and just realizing this is this is the way my life is. I mean, I can't connect to people, I can't be close to people, and yet because he can't do that, it's the thing he desires most to do. That's why he constantly does. That's why he made such a mountain out of the molehill, if you will, <laughs> you know, somewhat of a poor euphemism, um, but out of Clara that he did. He spent all his life doing this time and time and time again. How many people does this guy who is the savior of the universe have to lose before finally, you know, how many of us would not try to fight for someone we care about, break all the rules, do whatever, I mean, it's all too common a thing if a loved one is hurt or, or killed by someone. Because it's the human condition, we want vengeance. We seek to strike back at the one who brought that harm, who caused that harm. And I think River is a great sort of pinnacle at this point. Following on from the controversial actions of the Doctor and, and the whole story in the Whovian fandom, love it or hate it, people, you know, it was very divisive what he did, why he did it, who he did it for in, you know, the finale of uh, Series 9 and everything. But I think we needed this as viewers, and I think the Doctor needed it as a character. I think River needed it as a character because it's a sense of closure, and it's a closure stretching beyond just the Dr. River song dynamic. It's also everything that he experienced in Series 9. It's everything he experienced since meeting Clara Oswald and all that kind of stuff. And so for that, I mean, there were just so many layers representative in this Christmas special. And I mean, from the laughs, I mean, it had my sis and I, we were watching it together. <laughs> we were cracking up all the way through every time there was a joke. The tension, I was captivated by all the tension and the mystery, trying to piece together where we were with River and everything like that. And as those aspects were being peppered through and starting to be revealed through the course of the episode, I just, I was like leaning closer and closer to the screen, mouth agape, and I was just in awe and loving every minute of it. It was dripping wet with just rapture for me. And so, um, fantastic Christmas special. Definitely one of the higher ones on my list. Uh, I can sometimes take or leave the Christmas specials. My number one, still to this day, is A Christmas Carol, but I think this might just be my number two. Uh, All-time favorite out of all the Christmas specials now. Um, because there was a lot of character, a lot of heart, a lot of just great stuff on display for these characters, for these, you know, performances and everything. I loved seeing... Alex Kingston back as a river song and utilized in this way made it that much more meaningful. It wasn't just there for hello sweetie, let's, you know, do do the sort of uh sexy campy stuff and whatever like that. That was kind of beating a dead horse. They actually really filled this with heart and drama. And I loved it. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below if you've seen the 2015 Doctor Who Christmas special, The Husbands of River Song, if you enjoyed it, uh, if you loved it as much as I did, were as captivated by it as I was. If not, why not? Let me know in the comments below. love having a conversation, whether our POVs happen to disagree or not. Um, but I think this was a great way to round out Series 9 and the year on whole uh, for a Christmas special, for a Doctor Who special, Doctor Who anything, really. And uh, yeah. Otherwise, that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Happy holidays, all, and I'll catch you later. Peace.